In this demonstration, I want to show you how you can take your skills and your knowledge of running unit tests in Visual Studio and apply them actually into a DevOps workflow. Um, in this case, I want to show you how to do a continuous integration build. So you'll see here I've actually got all my unit tests, I've got their traits, etc. already set up. And as an individual developer on this workstation, I could go ahead and run them. I could run them all every time I build. But like I said, I want to show you how to actually do a CI build. So we're going to go ahead and click this in the Team Explorer that says New Build Definition underneath of the Build Hub. That takes me directly into my Team Services account, giving me options of which template do I want to use. Now in this case, I'm going to choose the empty, empty template to show you how you would create this from scratch or actually modify an existing build definition that you've got. But for you, I would recommend using that, that default template. Um, the next dialog is asking me, for this Git repo, which branch are, do you want to actually um, trigger and build? So again, the trigger kind of is kind of important. When somebody checks into the master branch, I'm going to kick off this build. So let's go ahead and choose Create. And I want to go ahead and set up this up to build my solution. So let's go ahead and scroll down, find the Visual Studio build, choose Add. Underneath of the test category, let's go ahead and choose the Visual Studio um, test task and choose close. Now in this case, I only have the one solution in my repo, so I wouldn't have needed to specify it. But I'm guessing that you guys probably have multiple solutions, in which case you will want to specify the individual um, solution that you want to build. In this case, I do want to run all my tests. But if I wanted to do things like um, generate code coverage or set my filter criteria, I could do that here. Now in this case, I also want it to have this build continue on error. So that way, regardless of I'm um, doing red, green refactor and I don't have my test running, the build is actually still runs all the way through. Let's go ahead and save this. Oh, actually, we forgot one important thing. To make it a CI build, you need to go to your triggers and check this checkbox. This is what makes it, when I do a check-in or anybody on my team does a check-in, it builds a solution and runs my tests. Now I can save this. And we'll call Chuck CI2 and choose OK. Now at this point, I actually want to take you into a test that's already run. Now you can see here I've got some Selenium tests that Gopi's ran about 10 minutes ago. I'm going to open up one of his runs and take a look at what's going on. Right off the bat, even if you've been playing with Visual Studio Team Services for a while, you'll see that there is a brand new test results um, dialog right here that shows me a, a build on build delta. Let's go ahead and open up the test results hub. And let's actually maximize this so we can take a look at what's going on here. Now, once, as I mentioned before, this is a build on build delta. This is really important for agile development teams to see not how they're doing from overall, but how did they do from the last build. And you'll see here that we've added in one test up to eight. So we had seven tests before, and now we've gone up to eight. And of those eight tests, one is now failing that wasn't failing before. Again, showing a delta from the last build, um, our pass percentage has actually regressed a little bit, and our run duration. Probably the most important information is going to be down here um, at the details view where it goes out and gives me my errors, it gives me my stack trace, and actually shows you what was the new regression. Um, now, for this new regression, almost certainly you're going to want to create a bug for that. And we make that really easy for you to create bugs by going out and pre populating all of it. Again, you get the error messages already in there, you get the stack already in there. Um, and also, so you can reproduce this without any extra effort, we actually attach both the build definition where this bug was introduced and the test results so that way you can actually see the additional run information. Um, I hope you see that Visual Studio is now making it much easier to integrate your efforts into the DevOps pipeline. For more information, take a look at aka.ms forward slash VSTS test. Thank you very much.